It's widely known that the invention of electricity allowed the humble fan to be motorized, spin a series of blades, and stir considerably more air, with the added benefit of not making your arms tired. From 1882 on through the next 50 years, the electric fan evolved, becoming quieter, more efficient, even oscillating. In fact, the fans that resulted from this era of improvements are remarkably similar to ones sold today. Or are they? Less well known is a major evolution in fan design that was actually sparked by man's quest to fly higher and faster than ever before. In the early 1920s, inventor Ralph K. Oder tinkered with an airplane design that pushed the airstream from a propeller through a tube. Testing in the late 20s and early 30s proved that Ralph was truly onto something. The technology was patented, and further testing proved that Ralph's concept of combining airfoils with the propeller and tube created a tornado or power vortex and resulted in greatly improved aerodynamics. It was during this time that the words vortex and tornado were combined, creating the phrase vornado. As he refined the technology, Ralph recognized that the same air principles that made his plane unique could also be applied to elevate the common fan to an ultra-high performance fan. <clears throat> air Circulator In the 1940s, the city of Wichita, Kansas became the unlikely birthplace of a revolutionary new way to circulate air. Actually, if you consider that Wichita, known as the air capital of the world, was the birthplace for some of the biggest names in aviation, perhaps it's not so unlikely that the air capital of the world is also the birthplace for a new air circulator. It was in Wichita that Ralph met O.A. Sutton, owner of a fabrication shop specializing in aircraft equipment. Ralph introduced his designs and continued to refine his circulator. Initial efforts to manufacture these so-called tornadoes were halted, as the country focused on fighting a ruthless dictator on multiple continents in a chapter of history called World War II. When he wasn't modifying warplanes, Ralph kept busy developing the tornado behind the scenes. By 1944, the fan design had been perfected, patents were filed, and Richard Ten Eyck was enlisted to finalize the look that would become Vornado's signature style. When the war ended, the O.A. Sutton Corporation stopped working on aircraft and started manufacturing fans sorry, air circulators, that looked and performed like no other. Through the 1950s, Vornado released dozens of models that anchored the brand's reputation for performance and quality. Times were good. At peak popularity, one in every three fans sold was a Vornado air circulator. Alas, another technology was gaining popularity during this time that would lead people to believe that fans were obsolete and that they could create civilizations in a desert. A little something called air conditioning. Despite a stellar reputation and an attempt to diversify, air conditioners put Vornado into a deep freeze until the products had all but disappeared from view, only to be found in antique stores and estate sales. In the early 1980s, Michael Cope, an avid fan collector, recognized that the attributes that made the original Vornado so effective were noticeably absent from modern fans. He realized that the Vornado brand could again keep people comfortable and allow them to save energy, despite the magical wonders of air conditioning. A new Vornado air circulator was built, using modern materials and styling. Though different on the outside, the new Vornado still incorporated the unique aerodynamics conceived by Ralph K. Oder so many years before. One needs only to look closely at a Vornado to see several major differences from typical fans. The first difference is the inlet guide cone that efficiently channels air to the fan blades and begins the tornado-like airflow. The second difference is Vornado's use of sturdy, deep-pitch blades that move more air than the shallow, flimsy blades of typical fans. Incidentally, when you try to move more air, you need a more powerful motor, which is why you may notice that a Vornado is heavier than a typical fan. The third difference is the air tunnel that focuses all of the air to the front of the product where it meets the fourth and newest difference, a spiral-shaped grill that twists in the opposite direction of the spinning blades. This offsets the twisting motion of the air, extending it far into the room. But why in the world does Vornado insist on calling its fan an air circulator? This unique airflow is called vortex action and allows a Vornado to push air across entire rooms, recirculating it along walls and ceilings in a constant pattern. A fan, on the other hand, simply keeps the air in front of it active, cooling only those that can feel the limited breeze. With a whole room circulator, everyone enjoys comfortable airflow, not just the guy that happened to sit closest to the fan and probably takes the last slice of pizza too. It turns out that good aerodynamics create interesting possibilities for other products. For example, Vornado heaters circulate heat throughout a room, which means the heat never builds up on or around the unit, allowing it to stay cool to the touch, unlike many heater technologies that might be better suited to toasting bread than heating entire rooms. Similarly, products that humidify and clean the air are greatly improved through a focused combination of power and aerodynamics. Vornado's design and engineering teams create all products in Andover, Kansas, a suburb of Vornado's original home of Wichita. Here, Vornado continues to assemble many models for sale throughout the world. It is also from Andover that Vornado provides unparalleled product support, which is important because when you build a product that's so different from the usual suspects, you need a knowledgeable team to answer questions like, what's the difference between a fan and a whole room circulator? 
But, of course, you now know the answer to that question.